Welcome to our last day of Maker Fun Factory. We've been spending all week learning about how God made each and every one of us perfectly unique, just the way He wanted them. Today's Bible point is, God made you for a reason. Wow, God! You know, our friend Ian texted me and said that he would be here with his new invention. He should be here any minute. I'm here. I'm just being extra careful today so that I don't drop my invention again. Okay, well, we don't have all day, so maybe you could speed it up a little bit? Okay. What are the odds that I... <gasps> uh, uh, oh, I so totally uh, got you. You did. But I can't wait to see what's under there. Well, I'm so pumped to show you it. But I'm going to need something first. I need everyone and I mean everyone, to get hyped to see the world's greatest invention okay. in the history of the world. Are you ready? Yes, 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 yes. Ta-da! Woo! What is it? What does it do? I don't know. Does it have a purpose? <sighs> okay, I didn't really design it to have a purpose. Oh. Well, you know, designers do make things for fun, but usually they design things for a reason. It reminds me of our Bible point. God created us for a reason. Wow, God. Really? Yes, you are a masterpiece. All week we've been learning about how God has created us for a purpose. That's incredible. Yeah. Is your mind blown? All right, <laughs> you're throwing it back. I love it. Hey, you know what? I have an idea. Does your mom like hats? I think she does. Yeah. I think she'll love this. That's not a bad idea. I think I have to give it to her as a hat. She'll love it, especially since it came just for you. Well, I'm off. Finally finished my invention. See you later, innovators. Have a great last day, kids, and I'll meet you back here later. Remember, God designed you for a reason. Wow, God.
welcome everyone to what is the fifth and final day of Kids Week at Park Street Church. So you've come to your final Bible lesson. I'm so glad you are here. Me too. I'm really glad you're here. Aren't you glad, Kyle? We've had a great week with these kids, even though we haven't been able to see them in person. Yeah, it's been fun being in the video every day. It has been great, and we're really grateful that you've been learning with us. So today, we have one more lesson from... Where is it from? Um, this is usually where Leslie gives the wrong answer. It's true. It usually is where I give the wrong answer, but it's the end of the week, and we know the story is from the Bible. We've been using the Beginner's Bible all week. Today, what we're going to do is just go ahead and talk through our story the way that it is, rather than read it and talk through it a second time. So today's lesson might be a little bit shorter for you on this last day of Kids Week. But are stories in the Bible true or made up, Kyle? They are true. That is right, because even though these stories happened, and you can do it with me at home, right? Even though these stories happened a long time ago, they are still true. That was a really long time. It's true. These stories are from a really long time ago, but they're still true and help teach us today. So I'm so thankful that all of you have been able to join us. Um, and I actually have a few little treats for myself today. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm going to open this up. Ooh, ooh, a treat. Yeah, a treat. I can't wait to have it. This is really good. Something wrong? <clears throat> What's up? Um, you're having a treat and, and I don't have one. Oh, interesting. Is that why you're making that face? Uh-huh. Hmm. What does your face look like when someone doesn't share with you? Probably about like that, or about like Kyle's face, right? Well, we don't really want you to look like that, so we'll share with you. Thank you. I love lemon. What does your face look like when someone does share with you? Well, you've still got the starburst in your mouth, but the idea is the same. A happy face, right? When someone does share with us, we're grateful, and it's really exciting. In our story today, a man did not share with someone, and it made a big, big problem. So today's story is from the book of First Samuel. You can follow along in your Bible at home if you'd like. The Bible is telling us about a soldier named David. Now, at home with me, you and I will all be soldiers in David's army. Let's do some marching. Oh, goody, more marching. More marching. Start marching, everybody. David's soldiers marched far from home, and they camped out in the desert for a long time. Now, there were shepherds and lots and lots of sheep near their camp. We're gonna get some sheep. Now, the shepherds were taking care of sheep that belonged to a man named Nabal. Nabal? Nabal, that's his name. David's men kept Nabal's shepherds and sheep safe. And after a while, Nabal said it was time to bring all the sheep back home. So we're going to now round the sheep up and send them back home to Nabal. Oof. 
Now, because David and his men did such a good job of keeping the shepherds and sheep safe, Nabal made lots of money from the sheep, and he decided to throw a big party. I love big parties. I do too, they're a lot of fun. Nabal invited his servants, his friends, oh, uh -huh, me too, I would too, his family, his neighbors, yeah, this sounds great, but he didn't invite David and his soldiers. What? It's true, he didn't. He wouldn't even give them any extra food or drink. That's pretty atrocious. You're right, Nabal wouldn't share. Show me again how your face looks when someone doesn't share with you. Right, kids? Yeah, right. David and his men got really mad. Show me an angry face. Right? David wanted to go and fight Nabal. Now, as a reminder, that would have been bad. It's never good when people fight. But, but, God had given Nabal a wise and wonderful wife named Abigail. She was kind and smart. She sounds like a great lady. She really was, and she's important to this story. When she heard about David's plan to come fight Nabal, she knew lots of people would get hurt. So she gathered her servants and told her servants to pack up plenty of food. Plenty of food. Here's our food. That's fake food. I know, but we're telling a real story. Okay. Abigail traveled on a donkey to David's camp. As soon as she saw David, she got off her donkey and bowed in front of David. She said she was sorry for Nabal's mean words. And she asked David to accept her gifts of food, and she asked him not to fight Nabal. David agreed, and he and the men enjoyed the food. They didn't fight Nabal. Can I have some food? You can have some food. That pizza has anchovies on it. Yes, it does. Go ahead. Nom, 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 nom. You can eat some food at home, too, kids. Mm, no, I'm full. Very well, Kyle. What do you think might have happened if Abigail hadn't been so kind? Well, I think something terrible could have happened. There would have been some big fights that didn't really need to happen if Nabal had just been kind and shared some food. You're right. God had a plan for Abigail. She was in the right place at the right time with a kind heart and a smart brain. She brought peace. Well, I do like peace. It's pretty important. If Abigail hadn't been married to Nabal, a lot of people might have gotten hurt in that story. But God made Abigail for a reason, and God made you for a reason. Well, God. Yes, God made me for a reason. God made Kyle for a reason. He made you and you and you and you for a reason. You may not know what God's plans are. Abigail probably didn't know that was the plan that first morning she woke up. But you can always trust that God's plans for you are good. God made you for a reason. Wow, God. And that is just awesome. Well, kids, that is the end of our preschool Bible lessons at Kids Week through Park Street Church. I am so glad you joined us, and I hope you learned many things about God this week while we went through the Bible stories together. We miss seeing you in person, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Good morning. Welcome to day five of Imagination Station, Kids Week Maker Fun Factory. Today's Bible point is, God made you for a reason. Today, we're going to make puzzles. Puzzles have many pieces, and you need the exact pieces to put them back together in the right way. We are all part of God's big puzzle that he created, and we are all the perfect piece to finish his puzzle that he created. Today, for our craft, we're making the same thing. My preschool friends have a puzzle with 12 pieces, and my older friends have a puzzle with 30. All you need to do is take your markers that we sent you and decorate your puzzle in any way that you would like. You can put a Bible verse on it. You could draw a picture of your pet. You could make a flower, a sunset, whatever you might like. Then take your puzzle and pull it apart and do your best to put it back together. Will you be able to do it? Could you put it back together in the first try? Remember, God has a plan for our lives and you are that perfect puzzle piece that fits in his. Remember, God made us for a reason. Have fun. This is Max. I believe I was put on this earth for a reason. You know, I wake up every morning just like everybody else. My mom is the fabric that holds together everything. And my dad is like your family and your friend. Then there's Jack. So we're twins and, okay, how do I describe him? He's like the brawn to my brain. Have two dogs, two cats, Annabelle, Lucy, Cooper, and Tahoe. Love them all. But there's one more thing you don't know about Max. I love science. I love inventing things. So where I am right now is my lab. Like if you were to do open heart surgery and like open up my heart, you'd find a, a miniature, you know, room that's exactly like this. Maybe it was a little bit bigger because it's kind of crowded in here. I'm a scientist, inventor, artist. Cuber. What do I like about inventing? <laughs> Everything. Well, you see, inventing is a way for me to release my creativity. But the cool thing about inventions is that you can invent from your mind. You can take what's in your mind, put it on paper, take what's on that paper, make it real. Before Max starts on a new invention, he always draws out a plan on paper. God has a plan for each of us. In the Bible, book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Whether it's wondering if I can build a robot, or maybe just conducting a Tesla coil so that I can shoot electricity from my fingertips. Max is very curious about how things work. Just look at all the cool inventions he created. He collects all kinds of used things so that he can make cool inventions. Max likes to come up with solutions that will help solve other people's problems. I'm just a kid who wants to make the world a better place. Just like God gave Max the gift to solve problems, God gave you special gifts. God made you for a reason.
Well, that wraps up Kids Week 2020 Maker Fun Factory. I hope you've had a lot of fun, and I hope you'll always remember that God made you. God is for you. God is with you. God will always love you, and God made you for a purpose. Thank you for joining us, and I'm so excited to see you next year for Rocky Railroad. Have a great year. See you later. Surprise!